If you caught the last episode where I talk about the Avalanche's debut masterpiece Since I Left You from the year 2000, then it's only a coincidence that in the same year, another artist's debut masterpiece would also be released. Yes, it's none other than Badly Drawn Boy. The Hour of Bewilderbeast is one of the most celebrated debut RPs, but today we're going to be diving deeper beyond his debut and seeing what else stands out. Hello and welcome to Vinyl Worthy Albums. I'm Luke, I'm a picky vinyl buyer and a deep diver of music. What we do here is go through albums that I can enjoy from start to finish without feeling the need to skip any tracks, and if an album can do that, then there's a good chance it will be considered vinyl worthy. When an artist has a vinyl worthy album, I then listen to their whole discography to see how I feel about it. This is my own journey of music discovery, and as you join me, I hope you discover some music you too can enjoy. The reason I make this series is because I'm simply looking to talk about music. I hope you can join in, give me your thoughts, share your own vinyl worthy albums, and I may get the chance to check them out. Badly Drawn Boy is the project of Manchester-based singer-songwriter Damon Goff. He likes hats, and some have drawn comparisons to his music with Elliot Smith. He was yet another Spotify weekly discovery for me around 2016, once around the block being the gateway for me to check out the Hour of Bewilderbeast. However, my first encounter with his music would have been around 2011, when I was studying about a boy for my English GCSEs. We watched the film a couple of times, and admittedly, I have very little memory of the film or the soundtrack from Badly Drawn Boy. Before the debut, Damon released four EPs. EP 1 and 2 are lo-fi bedroom recordings, and as of right now, they're both not on Spotify. These are not essential listens by any means. I would only suggest them if you're really into his music and want to see his earliest release recordings. Riding with Gabriel Greenberg is a scratchy instrumental with nudely licks on lead guitar over what sounds to me like seventh chords. It's playful and has a charm to it. Another standout perhaps worth checking out would be No Point in Living Reprise. EP2, I can't say that I enjoyed any of these tracks. EP3 is not as rough. My pick to check out from this one is My Friend Cubelius. It's the best track to come from his run of EPs and I can recommend this comfortably. The fourth EP was titled It Came From The Ground. The standout keeper from this one for me is Outsiders Light 2. Alright, time for Bewilderbeast and let's get right into the tracks. Kicking off with the first track, The Shining, and it's a pillar. It has a lovely horn intro and what stands out most to me is the mix and the production on this track. It sounds so good. Track 2 Everybody's Stalking is a lively follow up track. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to be complimenting the ordering of all the tracks throughout this album as it's done perfectly. I don't think I would change the ordering of any of the tracks but I'll get onto this a bit later on. With track 3 Bewilder. It's an accordion interlude and it sounds very fitting. We are then led into track four, Fall in a River, which again is another pillar for me. I love the fade in. Production once again is fantastic. It sounds like it's a live loop performance. Can anyone ID the instrument at the end? Because whatever that sound is, I love it. It's gorgeous. Track 5, Camping Next to Water, is admittedly not one of my favourites, but it's still good and enjoyable enough to be a keeper for me. As we flip over onto side B, we have Stone on the Water, which has a long intro, but it works for me. The next track, Another Pearl, it's another lively track to get the energy up, and notice how it's done this twice now. I like the vulnerability that can be heard in Damon's voice here, you can really hear his limited vocal range, which to me is more endearing if anything. Next up is Body Rap, which is another short interlude, and I like how it sharply cuts to Once Around the Block. So this is his most popular song, and it's understandable. The riff is super fun to play and sounds great. The lead guitar is also super fun to sing along with, which is often a sign of what makes a good musical idea, that if you can sing it and it sounds good, then it's likely going to go down well with others. It's an obvious pillar and it was my gateway into getting into Badly Drawn Boy, so probably start here if you really do need to be convinced. The final song on side B is this song. I actually really enjoy the use of panning that's on this track, however I have heard that others haven't enjoyed the panning effect and that it got a bit too much for them and I guess that's to each their own in that case. 
First up on side C is Bewilderbeast. This is an instrumental and what stands out here for me is the fuzz on the guitar. Great sound design. On Magic in the Air, I love the quick notes that I heard towards the end. It's like they're dancing and it does a great job at creating a magical feeling. This one is close to a pillar. What is a pillar is the next track though with Cause a Rock Slide. I love Damon's vocal performance on this with his head voice. The production again is a standout. I'm really into the percussion on this. It reminds me of Tonight Tonight by the Smashing Pumpkins as well as The Cures a few hours after this. It's quite a common production technique on the drums I hear often, but I don't actually have a word for the technique. So if anyone can once again give me the terminology for how this is communicated, if you're trying to describe it, then yes, please do leave a comment. So after a lo-fi sampling outro from Cause a Rock Slide, the intimacy we get on Pissing in the Wind is boosted. And I believe this to be no accident. It's incredible sound crafting. The harmonica was such a great choice to add, and the space at the end for the piano, it comes together so perfectly. Next up is Blistered Heart, it's a short instrumental, it works, and there's no complaints from me here. Next up is Disillusion, and it's groovy. Again, the timing here is so good. At this point, I can't help but feel like, as a collection of songs ordered in this particular way, it's only boosted the experience and that if these tracks were heard in isolation from each other in a different order, then it would not have the same impact. On the penultimate track, Say It Again, for me, the horns are what elevate this track. And finally, the last song, Epitaph. All I can say is this is a top tier song. It's one of my all time favorites that I perform in my acoustic set. I love the lo-fi start with the Nature Atmos and how it shifts into slightly less lo-fi as it goes on. If you've been keeping up with the channel, then you'll come to realise that I don't talk about lyrics all that much. And admittedly, it's not something that I pay that much attention to unless they really stand out for me. And they really stand out for me on this track. With lyrics such as, please don't leave me wanting more, I hope you never die, there's no need to say why, just promise that you'll try. As new fruit fills the trees, cements the melody to signify we're free, our troubles passing. Through decaying simple times, I'll tread your trail of pride, say maintenance on the side, I've nothing better. I mean, I'm just so speechless at how beautiful these lyrics are. They really hit home for me. I guess we could also start taking notice of some of the best album closers, and I feel like this one is definitely going to make that list if that ever gets made in the future by me. So there you have it. This is no doubt a must-own album on vinyl for me. Two years later, Nick Hornby asked Damon to write the soundtrack for the film adaptation of his book About a Boy. I like how the tracks weave into each other despite it being a soundtrack. All is functional, but it doesn't really resonate with me all that much, so there's only a few tracks that stand out as ones to return to for me. One of those is A Peaky Reach, and this one is just okay to me. It has room to grow, but it's not a clear cut keeper for me. The next one would be Silent Sigh, which is possibly the most expressive Damon has ever been with his voice, I would say. And this one has just only continued to grow on me. It did start out as a grower and, and then got to a keeper and have to say I'm feeling close to a pillar on this actually. Yeah, let's make it a pillar. On SPAT or SPAT, it's an energetic instrumental and I do find myself moving along to this one. It's got a cheekiness to it. I find Rachel's flat to be cozy and inviting and walking out of stride, I really like the simplicity of this. But the star of the show for me is a minor incident. This is absolutely amazing. It was an immediate pillar for me. Within the same year of 2002, Damon released Have You Fed The Fish, and it's decent. The ones that do land for me is Have You Fed The Fish. This feels like classic rock, especially Band On The Run era wings, so definite keeper there. The middle of the album with All Possibilities, I Was Wrong, You Were Right, and Centerpiece. These did take some time to grow on me as they were originally growers and then grew their way to being keepers for me. 
on the track How. There's a lot of movements going on here and it feels like it's a song for musicians. We get a tonal shift with the further I slide and sure it's a bit on the nose but I still love it because Sexual Healing is to me one of the best songs ever made and yeah this is borrowing if not you know just straight up taking from that song completely but I still enjoy it a lot and enough for it to be a pillar. While I skip using our feet, I do want to note that I like the bass in this, but overall as a full track, it's not something I see myself returning to. The next track, Tickets to What You Need. This feels like it's Paul McCartney all over it. And then the last two tracks, What Is It Now and Bedside Story, they're inoffensive, but again, they're not something I'd want to really return to, so I skip them. Next up is 2004's One Plus One Is One. Oh dear. The production sounds thin throughout. The songs themselves are all skippers anyways, if that's any silver lining. No. <laughs> oh well then. Without doubt, one to avoid. The tracks vary between being inoffensive, but without a reason for me to want to really return to, and then across to obvious skippers such as Summertime and Wintertime. If there was any song with any hope on this album, it would be This Is That New Song but it's still not good enough for me to make it past being skipped. A highlight for me for all of the wrong reasons would be Year of the Rat. I really dislike the use of children choirs. It just about worked for Pink Floyd, but it's absolutely not working for me here. Badly Drawn Boy has always been an indie artist, but I think at this point in time, it was really starting to become clear that things were not going to get as big as they once were for Damon. As I was listening to his discography in linear order, I was starting to get a bit concerned for what was to come also, as I had been aware that a lot of people saw at this point in time that he was really dropping off. So let's see if that was really the case. 2006, born in the UK. And overall, mm, no, there's, there's a lot to be kept here. I will admit when I first heard born in the UK, I was worried. I thought, oh dear, it could be a very rough experience going forward. But thankfully, I found that I started to really enjoy the album once we got past Degrees of Separation, and Welcome to the Overground was much better. It started as a grower, but it quickly grew to be a keeper for me after a few listens over time. It has ever so slightly a feel of Kiss from a Rose to it. On a journey from A to B, the piano on the high register reminds me of what you get from Bruce Springsteen. I did find it curious that from reading up on Damon that one of his musical heroes was Bruce Springsteen. That's not a surprise because I love Bruce as well, but I didn't really come across the influence on much of Badly Drawn Boy's music as a whole. On Nothing's Gonna Change Your Mind, it was another grower to a keeper, and it's another track that uses a similar effect to Planet Caravan. I feel like I really need to start keeping count of how many times I mentioned Planet Caravan now because it feels like this is like the third or fourth time I've mentioned it in this series. It seems what they're doing to get the effect is by using a rotating speaker cabinet. It's really cool actually. I recommend you check it out. The next track Promises is a pillar. It really hits the spot for me. Next is The Way Things Used To Be and the slide guitars work well for him also. On Without A Kiss, I find it to be challenging as it's disjointed and it's weaving around, but it keeps it interesting and it flows well. It's kind of low-key great, but I would understand if it's not for everyone. The Long Way Round has a note movement that I struggle to gel with, but otherwise I do like the track. It's closer to a keeper than a skipper, but for now it's going to have to stay as a potential grower. Walk You Home Tonight is close to something great, but it's not quite reaching greatness for me. There's something just missing in there to, to elevate it to being great. So yeah, again, I think it can stay in the potential grower to a keeper. It's so close to being a keeper straight up, but it feels like it was a missed potential. I do like Time of Times and on the final track, One Last Dance, I find that it's totally forgettable. In 2009, Damon gave us Is There Nothing We Could Do? 
music inspired by the motion picture The Fattest Man in Britain. I've not seen the film, it was a straight to TV film and I believe it's like easily available to find, but I am curious to see the similarities between it and The Whale, which is Brendan Fraser's acclaimed comeback film. And yeah, I, if I am going to watch them, then I'll probably watch those back to back just to see what kind of similarities and differences come from it. Damon discovers reverb and reprises the melody from the titular track as well as the melody from Welcome Me to Your World. They are beautiful melodies and strong enough to work in reprisal. The Keepers are tracks I put on for something I'd put on to chill out to. The Skippers are either instrumentals that I don't find add much, or tracks that have samples taken from the film that I find hurt the music, mainly because I don't like the accents if I'm being completely honest. An example of this is the lovely arrangement of the letter which is ruined by the reading at the end. One of the tracks that I want to talk about is Guitar Medley. It has a ukulele feel and at times reminds me of Israel's legendary cover of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Does anyone else hear that? A detail that I like once again is that all of the tracks flow into each other. A year later, in 2010, Damon gives us It's What I'm Thinking, part one photographing snowflakes. It was intended to be the first of a trilogy, and it seems that 13 years later we are yet to see part two. But who knows? Still time. Anyways, I am divided in half on this album. The first half I enjoy, however it drops off about the halfway point, and by the end I struggle to want to return to it. Coming out the gate with fantastic mood setters for the first two tracks, by track 3 we get more orchestral elements that then carry through into the rest of the album. The songs are well written, the arrangements have musical hooks that fill in the spaces really well, like on I Saw You Walk Away. This is Damon back on good form for me. In Safe Hands is lush, The Order of Things has a great guitar tone, Too Many Miracles sounds like it's using Phil Spector's Wall of Sound, it's a gorgeous track, I really like the lyric. The age of romance is dead and gone, but maybe there's a chance I'm wrong. What Tomorrow Brings is a continuation of what has come before, and I particularly like the percussion on this. I Saw You Walk Away It's a great arrangement, and it has good space fillers. I really enjoy the atmosphere that's on You Lied. As someone else had mentioned, this does have a similar melody to Don't Fear the Reaper, but it's not on the nose and this stands up on its own merit to me. On a pure accident, it's a rare one for me where the production hurts the song. There's too much reverb on the vocals in my opinion. This electric has better production, but by this point I'm kind of losing interest and it's not strong enough to lift up my enthusiasm. But this track is enough to be a keeper I would say just about. I don't like this beautiful idea, it's another one where I don't like the production and it's the vocals to be more precise. I didn't like the song itself though, so I don't feel like I've missed anything anyway. In 2012, Damon gives us another film soundtrack, this one for Being Flynn. This one came about as the director of the film was Paul White, who was the director of About a Boy. And this project goes well in my opinion. It's a bit of a gem considering this is not highly regarded or even well known about in his discography it seems. Like the About a Boy soundtrack, Many of the instrumental tracks are simply functional and are good to have on in the background, but it's tracks like It's Too Late, Last Day, The Smile Behind Your Face and The Space Between My Ears are the ones that are definitely worth checking out, and Another Day, Another Night and Let It Rain stand out as being pillars. On The Space Between My Ears, it kind of reminds me of Queen's I Want to Break Free, but I kind of like this more. On Another Day, Another Night, it has fantastic horns, it has a great feel, it's produced excellently and the backing vocals are a great touch as well. Singing in the Rain is one of my favourite pieces and the closeness it has to it is a great homage. The entire feel of this track is lush, the orchestra, Damon's and the backing vocals are perfect. So yeah, as you can see, even at this point in his career, he's still putting out some very good music that's worth checking out. It did take 10 years though to get the next LP Banana Skin Shoes. On this, Damon brings back the energy, however the songs themselves don't land for me. 
Is This a Dream has a great verse melody, but the chorus lets it down for me. It has room to grow to a keeper though. When you make a track about the legendary Tony Wilson, you better make sure it's good. And it really is. It's a great ode to him. The vocals seem very dark in EQ and feel a little buried in the mix, but I love the synth and it's a great feel good track. It's good enough to be a pillar. On I Need Someone to Trust, I feel like I can hear the Melodyne. I'm totally okay with Melodyne, it's everywhere now, but I shouldn't feel like I can notice it. Even if he hasn't used it here, something about it, the vocals just seems off. Alright, so I think we're safe to say that Badly Drawn Boy is definitely more than a one album wonder. That concludes this episode, thank you for watching if you got this far. Remember to check out other vinyl worthy episodes if you like this, our taste might align more than you think. Or, you may discover something new to love. Peace and love, peace and love, bye 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 bye.